Um, hi, everyone, and thanks our chair for the introduction. I'm Chen Liang Zhang from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, and I'm here to present our work, Mark, which is tailored to serve machine learning models inference on public cloud. Uh, machine learning serving is to deploy trained models for users' requests. And we have seen rapid growth in demand for machine learning serving on public cloud thanks to its ease of use and unified user experience. In such a scenario, model owner acts as a, a cloud tenant and the service provider at the same time, right? And as a service provider, we want scalability and SOLO compliance for our users. And as a cloud tenant uh, from the public cloud, we want the lowest cost possible. And uh, at the moment, there are numerous services available on public cloud. We can use virtual machines, containers, and even serverless functions right now. And some of the cloud providers even provide like out-of-the-box serving platforms. So we first characterized machine learning serving and its performance on all these cloud services as there is no existing work to do so. And then we designed and implemented a system to serve machine learning on cloud based on our insights. As there is no state-of-the-art solution for such matter, let's take a look at the state-of-the-practice system. SageMaker is the leading machine learning as a service platform from AWS. And like other popular platforms, SageMaker employs reactive scaling on virtual machine cluster in a very conventional way. And the provisioning decision is made as a feedback of the historical load information. And in public cloud, the provisioning time is way longer than the inference execution time. So we need over provisioning to hide the provisioning time of these virtual machines. And in that case, uh, machine learning inference is very compute intensive, thus make it extremely expensive to over provision. So I would say existing industry solutions are far from ideal uh, from the cost perspective. Another unique property of machine learning serving is that it has many expensive hardware accelerators available on cloud. Uh, unlike training, these accelerators are not essential for serving as there is way less parallel computation involved and CPU can handle that very comfortably. So if we were to use these accelerators, we need to, like grouping multiple requests into one batch to increase the parallelism is a common practice to exploit such accelerators. And besides taking advantage of high parallelism optimization that's built into these optimized uh, accelerators, uh, batching also can amortize overheads like RPC calls and cross-device memory copy. And so the question remains, like, how do we choose between CPUs and accelerators? And what's the cost and latency impact of these accelerators? We characterize popular accelerators, uh, GPU and TPU, against our good old CPU and depicted the results in the figure. The horizontal axis here is the batch size, and the bars and lines shows the cost and batch latency, uh, respectively. And as we can see, Accelerator, accelerators benefit substantially from batching. And in fact, with appropriate batching and full utilization, you, GPUs here can be cheaper than CPUs. As we can see, when batch size reaches four, the cost of GPU is already lower than CPUs, and because CPU, CPUs costs kind of remain the same even with batching. But large batch size also leads to longer queuing delay, and in the serving, scenario, delay matters. So in conclusion, maintaining high utilization and picking the right batch size carefully are essential for accelerator adoption in machine learning serving. And as for the TPU, uh, it is designed for massive parallel and optimized for throughput instead of latency. So in this case, they are not suitable for inference yet. Another challenge we face on cloud is the abundance of choices. We can use virtual machines from IAS, containers from CAS, and we can also use serverless computing from function as a service. And each of these services has a large configuration space. What's more, 
cloud providers usually offer discounted instances with compromised service guarantees, such as spot instances and burst wall instances from AWS and like their counterparts from Google and Microsoft. No existing work has explored how do we pick and right size these services, as well as how do we explore, uh, exploit these discounts without hurting users' experience for machine learning serving. We first compared the three services options, uh, Swiss three service options, IAS, CAS, and FAS on AWS corresponding service, EC2, ECS, and Lambda. Uh, as we can see, uh, IAS and CS has the very traditional pay-as-you-go billing uh, option. As long as the instances are running, you are charged. Well, FAS is pretty new, and the good thing about it is, is on, uh, they will only charge you for the actual function usage. That means you won't be charged unless there are active requests running in, on these functions. And as we can see here, summarized, uh, in order to serve the same amount of machine learning requests, uh, IAS is the cheapest when it comes to cost, but it suffers from the long scaling overhead. That means it takes a long time to scale out. And well, FAS is really fast to scale out. Like a new function can be ready online in a few seconds, but it has the highest cost. So. One idea came to our mind is that what if we combine IAS and FAS together to achieve the both, best of both worlds so that instead of over-provisioning in IAS, we let FAS provide supplementary service while new IAS instances are launching so we can also hide the provisioning time without actually doing over-provisioning. We then evaluated how CPU and memory affect machine learning serving performances. Uh, we compare compute optimized C5 family uh, with the general purpose M5 family. And M5 instances have twice the memory as C5 instances. And as the normalized cost shown in the bars confirmed, uh, CPU is the bottleneck of machine learning serving uh, inference, and the latency drops sublinearly uh, with the addition of CPU resource. And Adding excessive memory doesn't help with the performance at all. And so it's safe to say like with on-demand pricing, if SLO allows, smaller instances are preferable as it is cheaper and also can provide us with a smaller uh, scaling step size. And spot instances are idle resource uh, resources cloud providers lease out with the premise that AWS can take them back whenever they want with a short notice. These instances are up to 75% cheaper than their on-demand counterparts. So it is really appealing to us because our uh, machine learning serving is really cost sensitive. And fortunately, machine learning serving has the property of being stateless. That means the response only depends on the request and all these requests are independent. So that makes the problem easier as we don't have to worry about preserving consistency and doing checkpoints and all kinds of stuff in case of interruptions. And now that we also have FAS as a uh, fallback, even if the substitute VMs cannot be ready before the actual interruption, we still have something to fall back on. So to summarize our characterizations in a few sentences, so like for all these cloud services, IS is the most cost effective and FAS is the easiest to scale and we kind of want to uh, take advantage of them. And within on-demand market, and smaller CPU instances are preferable and batching is essential to adopt accelerators and batch size is an important control knob for cost and latency uh, trade-off. And it's pretty safe to use slot instances for machine learning serving. So let's recall our machine learning serving objectives and challenges. How can we design a system for machine learning serving based on its unique properties and our insights? To improve cost effectiveness, first, we need to maintain high utilization on all these VMs and trade off between different instance types so we can use 
workload prediction and proactively plan our instances. And secondly, as we mentioned, uh, we can use IFAS to hide the provisioning time instead of doing over-provisioning. And thirdly, in order to adopt spot instances, we will need an online provisioning algorithm as the price and availability of spot market is dynamic. And in order to utilize Accelerator, we will need to employ dynamic backchain to actively trade off between the cost and latency. And one important guideline is that like, to adopt, like, we will always need to be better off with batching enabled. And, and as for SLO requirements, machine learning serving SLOs are, are usually specified as 99% like, of all requests must, must finish under one second. And in the public cloud, there is no closed form, closed form solution for respond, response time distribution. However, traces from large industrial clusters show that machine learning serving has the convenient property of being deterministic when it comes to execution time because it has fixed size input features and it applies the same model on all the inputs and all the uh, computation has the same compute pattern. So we can, in this case, we can assume fixed execution time and only focus on the queuing delay for each request so that we can timely route these requests to maintain SL compliance at the best effort manner. Uh, we designed and implemented MARC, as in model ARC. We utilize the hybrid of IAS and FAS to reduce over-provisioning. We use dynamic batching to acceler uh, on accelerators to increase the cost reduction. We use proactive scaling to maintain a constant high utilization. And we also monitor SL performance to detect a prediction error as early as possible so that we can reactively add more instances if needed. So how does Mark provision instances based on the prediction? Essentially, we are orchestrating a heterogeneous cluster. And instances of each type can be seen as MDCQ. And the problem is very complicated. And impossible to solve in an online manner, so we propose a greedy heuristic instead. For future load demand, we try to fill it with the cheapest instance, try to, uh, yeah. For future demand, we try to fill it with cheapest instances one by one, considering both pass-you-go price and launch overhead. This way, we get to expose and exploit the long-term cost trade-offs between large and small instances and CPU and GPU, uh, instances while maintaining high utilization. And if you're interested, please refer to our paper for more details. And we implemented Mark and then evaluated on AWS with four diverse machine learning models of all sizes with different backend, uh, with different backends. In order to evaluate the cost savings of Mark under a real life large scale web application, we abstract the arrivals from uh, Twitter workload and apply them to Mark. We use SageMaker as the baseline since it is the state of the practice machine learning serving system right now. And ML here represents Mark on demand, where Mark only considers on demand instances. And MS represents Mark uh, spot, where spot instances are also considered. And we can see Mark on demand, on demand achieved significant cost reduction already from the benefits from uh, no over-provisioning and applying batching over accelerators. And Mark Spot furthered that cost reduction by exploiting the, costs, uh, the discounts from Spot Market. We then compare the SL compliance of Mark. We use this complementary CDF figure to show the tail latency of our services. The outlaying percentages here show the request that didn't make it within the deadline. Besides the aforementioned workload Twitter, we introduced another highly dynamic yet unpredictable uh, synthetic workload MMPP so that we can see if Mark's SLO compliance relies on the accurate prediction of the future workload. And as we can see here in the figure, uh, no matter with like real life uh, workload Twitter or like a synthetic unpredictable workload MMPP, uh, our system mark always 
achieve a, a much better SL compliance compared with SageMaker, as SageMaker really struggled to adapt to the highly dynamic workload. We then use this uh, micro benchmark to see how exactly Mark handles unexpected load surge compared with SageMaker. In case of surging demand, Mark's latency is always capped by the latency of Lambda function because it can always, it's always, it's, will always be there to like, and ready to serve in a few seconds. And it can quickly recover to the SL, uh, recover to the normal latency as the SL monitor uh, effectively scales out the cluster in a reactive manner uh, in time. So in conclusion, uh, with this work, we characterized machine learning surveying on the available public cloud services and then designed Mark based on our insights and achieved scalable and so where surveying with uh, significantly lower costs compared with uh, industry solutions. So Mark is open sourced on GitHub and if you have any more questions, you can take it offline and find me with the QR code and I'm currently seeking internship opportunities. So that's all I have for today and I'm happy to take any question. I'm Yao from Amazon, and I have a question about uh, auto batching. Mm -hmm. um, as far as we know, like currently the mainstream deep learning uh, framework, they only support static shape deployment. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious how you like actually implement those uh, dynamic batching strategies. For example, did you uh, create multiple instances for different batches and using some bucketing policies? Uh, no, we didn't. So as we can see, uh, uh, let me find the slide. As we can see in the picture here, yeah, like with the increase of batch size, the latency of GPU like really goes really slowly. And as for your concern, like if the framework only supports like a fixed sized batch size, we can always use padding to support like these kind of like different batch sizes, right? Yeah, I, I'm thinking about something like in TensorFlow Serving, they have some auto-batching mm -hmm. policy libraries. Like you can adjust your input batch sizes depending on your like oh, uh, yeah. current TPS. But uh, like, so you, you, you're, you are saying your method is just uh, like picking a fixed batch size or, mm -hmm. or, or padding them, right? No, 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 we actually didn't do that because if in our evaluation, like uh, as we didn't do batching. So basically we applied a very similar uh, approach as TensorFlow Serving or SWAM from Microsoft. It's, uh, it's giving a time window and if like the fix, like and the batch size threshold and whenever the threshold, uh, whichever threshold are reached first, then we'll just form the batch directly and feed it into the serving backend. Okay, uh, yeah, what I mean is in the serving backend, you, 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 you only use one instance for uh, dealing with a fixed batch because as I said, like static graph is the most common ways like for the deep learning framework you can dealing with those workloads, right? I'm, I'm curious about how you actually doing inference in the backend using those deep learning frameworks using if your batch size oh, varies. I see, I see, I see. Yeah. I see your question. So like, we took a system, system perspective on this work. So we assume it's all the serving backends are black boxes to us. Okay. We only like profile the uh, capacity first and take that as an input. Um, okay. We don't care about how, how did they serve, serve it in the backend. Yeah, if, because in the actual implementation, like I can, like we can imagine that some, sometimes you need multiple instances to serve this kind of uh, dynamic okay. shape stuff. That's good to know. And um, maybe we can ha have an offline discussion about yeah. it. Thank sure. you. Okay, uh, let's thank the speaker one more time.